Hi everyone. Suppose we know all the loss powers in a MOSFET. In that case, can we then calculate the internal temperature of this component? My name is Stef Vindrake and in this video I discuss a simple static thermal model which can be used to calculate the junction temperature of a MOSFET. If you want to know what loss powers all occur in the MOSFET, check out the corresponding video in this playlist. So let's start with a symbol of a MOSFET and in this case we have a symbol of an N-channel MOSFET in which we have a gate, a drain and a source. And when we put the positive voltage between the gate and the source, which is higher than a so-called threshold voltage, then this MOSFET starts to conduct. So uh, the channel between the drain and the source is in conducting, so we can model it as a switch which has been closed in this case. But it's not an ideal component, it's not an ideal switch. It has a so-called resistance and in a MOSFET we call that the RDS on. And that MOSFET will dissipate power due to that um, not ideal uh, behavior of that switch. But also for instance uh, due to the switching of this MOSFET it will dissipate some power. And these power losses result in warming. So we want to use a simple thermal model to calculate the internal chip temperature of that MOSFET, which we also call the junction temperature. And to start with that simple thermal model, we have a thermal resistance drawn over here. And the thermal resistance is a measure of a component's resistor to heat flow. So in this case, it quantifies how effectively the MOSFET can resist the transfer of heat. A unit is Kelvin per watt, and sometimes you see grade Celsius per watt. And across that thermal resistance we have on one side the junction temperature, the chip temperature, and on the other side we have the ambient temperature. And through that thermal resistance the dissipation power flows. And now we can use the so-called Ohm's thermal law, which is an equivalent of the normal Ohm's law. But in this case we have replaced the voltage, which is always across a normal resistance, by the temperature. So the junction temperature and the ambient temperature in Kelvin or in grade Celsius. We have replaced the current which flows to a normal resistance by a loss power which flows to, through this thermal resistance and we have already said that the normal resistance is replaced by a thermal resistance in Kelvin per watt. And knowing that we can now say that the delta T, so the temperature across this thermal resistance, divided by the power flow over here is equal to the thermal resistance between the junction and the ambient. So it's the RTH uh, between the junction and the ambient. And the temperature across this thermal resistance is equal to the junction temperature minus the ambient temperature. So we get the following, the following equation which says that difference between the junction temperature and the ambient temperature divided by the dissipation power equals the thermal resistance between the junction and the ambient. So in this case I can calculate the junction temperature which is equal to the ambient temperature plus the dissipated power times the thermal resistance between junction and ambient. But this is a simple thermal model but, but um, in most situations we use this model in an, uh, this MOSFET in an application and for instance we mount that MOSFET uh, to a PCB or to an external heatsink. And then we have to split up that thermal resistance in three thermal resistances. So um, the first thermal resistance which we see over here is the RTHJC which is the thermal resistance between the junction and the case. The case is the housing of the MOSFET. And then we have the thermal resistance between the housing of the MOSFET and the heatsink, which could be an external heatsink or a PCB in case of an SMT component. And last we have the thermal resistance between the heatsink and the ambient temperature over here. So we have split up the thermal resistance junction to ambient in three thermal resistances. And now we can calculate the junction temperature which is equal to the ambient temperature plus the dissipation flow over here times the addition of all these three thermal resistances.
but where can you find the relevant information? Well, mostly um, the thermal resistance between junction and case, you can find that in the datasheet of a MOSFET, mostly on page number one. The thermal resistance between the case, so the housing of the MOSFET, um, and the heatsink depends on your application and also sometimes the datasheet gives some information. And of course, the thermal resistance between the heatsink or your PCB in case of an SMT component, that thermal resistance depends on your application. For instance, the size of your um, copper area on your PCB or the size of your external heatsink. What you also see is that in some cases, the datasheet specifies a thermal resistance between the junction and the ambient with a condition for the PCB mounting. An example of this is the component IRFZ34 of Vichy, which specifies over here thermal resistance of 40 grade Celsius per watt or 40 Kelvin per watt um, with respect to a certain PCB mount, which you can find in the datasheet. And the uh, datasheet also specifies a maximum junction to case temperature uh, thermal resistance over here, so this value. Um, another example, for instance, the 75N06 of on semiconductor specifies also a junction to case thermal resistance, that one of uh, maximum 0.7, also in this case, grade Celsius per watt, which is equal to Kelvin per watt, and it specifies the complete junction to ambient temperature, uh, thermal resistance, sorry for that, the complete uh, junction to ambient thermal resistance, the R uh, THJA of 62.5 degrees uh, Celsius per watt. Another uh, thing which is often useful is information in an application node. And I took some information of an application node of SE Microelectronics, which specifies um, some information of a MOSFET in a so-called DPAC package. And what you see in the graph over here is that uh, they have put on the horizontal axis the area of the cooling area on your PCB and on the vertical axis the thermal resistance between the junction and the PCB, so in grade Celsius or Kelvin per watt. And what you see is that the higher the area or the greater, the, the larger, I should say, the larger the area of the, the copper on your PCB will be, the lower the um, thermal resistance between the junction, so the chip and the PCB will be, up to a certain value, uh, let's say in this case 200 squared millimeters, and then it uh, doesn't matter anymore um, that when you increase the area uh, further, then it won't have uh, any more effect on the lowering of your thermal resistance between the junction and the PCB. So there's a lot of information in data sheets and in application note. So when you um, are going to design a MOSFET application, please use this information and um, use this thermal MOSFET to calculate that maximum junction temperature. And in that case, you can see whether your application um, fits to the requirements in your data sheet. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.